Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what we're going to talk about in this video is some major updates coming to Grand Stream routers. Now, whether you are already in the GWN ecosystem for networking or whether you're looking around for a router, um, first of all, the updates that are coming for this thing, let's uh, flip over here. So this is in beta. I have been running it but they've got almost two pages of, of added things. And they've done things like added a VPN configuration wizard. You can now use uh, FQDNs all over the place instead of IP addresses. They now have dynamic routing. So I've got this on my GWN 7002. I'll put affiliate links to the 7001 and the 7003 down below. But look at these, look at these, uh, so you can now manage switches through the GWN. Now, this is the GWN 7000 series, so it's not the home routers. Uh, it is the routers that that look like, like this, the, the black router. And I'll leave those affiliate links down below. They've added uh, OSPF, RIP, BGP. RIP, I'm kind of, you know, people are supporting it, but... And there might be some people using it. I'm not using RIP. But uh, we're going to use OSPF internally. We're going to use BGP on our WAN interfaces. And I suppose you could use BGP internally if, if you wanted to. Um, so now you can manage switches. They bumped it up to 300 access points. Or they did, they did something to shore up those 300 access points that you can manage with this. So, and you can get a GWN 7001 for, uh, let's see here, uh, 5753. So if you're looking to get into that platform, it is ridiculously inexpensive. Um, we can, they've added all kinds of filters. Uh, they've added support now for the six gigahertz band in the management so now if you have wi-fi 6e routers you can manage that um, i'm going to show you the wizard because i'm really um, excited about that you can do ip exceptions now in the denial of service defense um, you can schedule your traffic rules they've added a lot of stuff for a sub 60 dollar router so uh, they've added the captive portal for the wired network. Uh, let's see what else. Yeah, they've added tons of stuff. You can clone rules now. Little things, you know, little things that make our lives easier. So you can clone rules now in your traffic, NAT, and port forwarding. Um, standby mode for policy routing. Uh, what else? Yeah, here's the added the FQDNs. They've added IP groups. Um, you can import open VPN certificates now. Let's see what else. But I mean, this update, when you just look at everything that they've done, they have added a ton of stuff. So let's let's take a look at it. So now this is my 7002. So now under whoop, under routing. We now have OSPF, we now have BGP, and we now have RIP. And the great part about this is you don't have to know anything about the command line. If somebody gives you the settings and they tell you what their ASN is, you know, you can come in and you just add the remote ASN there. Um, you turn on BGP here, you put your ASN here, you put your router ID, which is typically, if you're doing this on the WAN, it's going to be your WAN uh, IP address. And then you can do external route uh, imports, and you can import that right into OSPF, right? So if you've got a block of IP addresses from your provider and you will now want to use this at the head end of your network and you want to redistribute your block of IP addresses throughout your network, you can do that via OSPF. I suppose you could do it via RIP too, but uh, in static. But I, I, I've not... I've not done it with RIP, but we do it with OSPF, right? So huge updates there. Um, the other thing, and I think they may have um, updated this 
a while ago. So right here on your GWN router, you have this IP version 4 routed subnet. And what that's going to do is allow you to take, if you have an actual block of IP addresses from your provider, it's going to bypass NAT, all the firewall rules and everything else, and allow you to pass those IPs through onto your, your LAN. And then you can go through, of course, and you can set up firewall rules if you want to uh, you know, restrict the type of traffic that is coming through the firewall. So and then you can see here there, you know, we can enable the captive portal. Under VPN, here's that setup wizard. And this thing looks really nice. So you have all of the VPN options right here. And of course they recommend WireGuard. So when we go to the WireGuard um, setup wizard, I already have a test and to get to where you can actually set it up you just click add um, and you can only do uh, one WireGuard instance at the moment so we're gonna set up test is it gonna be client to site or site to site so you can do both client to site or site to site with that and it completely walks you through that setup now in here we've got IPsec and it is site to site only for the IPsec Open VPN is client to site or site to site. And remember, you can now use, uh, and you pr actually with the Grandstream router you could earlier, but you can use fully qualified domain names. So if you don't have static IP addresses on your WAN interface, you can have dynamic DNS and you can use that dynamic DNS host name as the target. And then down here, um, you know, we're still, everybody is still supporting PPTP. And then you've got L2TP, and you can do site to site. So if you don't wrap L2TP, um, or um, uh, yeah, if you don't wrap L2TP in IPsec, it's just a just a tunnel with no encryption. So I was super excited about that. And so now you can see, of course, we've got AP management. We've had that for a long time, but now we've got our switch management in here. We've got our access control. Um, you still got your port forwarding DMZ. This DMZ option uh, has been here for a while. I just wanted to touch on it. This does create the DMZ where it forwards all ports from your WAN interface to a host inside, right? So it kind of drops that that traffic, or I'm sorry, drops that firewall. So all that traffic comes through under our firewall. Uh, we've still got all of the good good things that we had before. Here's our traffic rules, so we can add a traffic rule. We can see our source. So now, with fire the firewall rules, how cool is this? We can now specify a fully qualified domain name. So we go out and we check, right? So let's say that you've got a site that's got DHCP on its WAN, and you only want... Uh, that host, so not specifically IP address, but you've got a you know a dynamic DNS assigned to that, and you always want that host to be able to get, you know, be allowed through this firewall rule. We can now do FQDN. We can do FQDN address groups. We can do IP version four, which we could always do. You can do entire subnets. You can do IP version four address groups. So, and then here is our excuse me, our uh, schedule, where we can create that schedule, turn that rule on and off. Here's your, your actions down here. And then we've got SNAT and DNAT. So on our uh, source NAT, we can look at uh, our um, the destination type. Again, we can select the fully qualified domain names. We can do entire groups and things like that. So they've added quite a bit uh, to this and and being able to do fully qualified domain names is is awesome because now where people are paying twenty dollars for a static IP address sometimes it's even more sometimes you have to buy a block of five you you no longer you no longer need that so they just ratcheted the the valueness the valueness the value of this router way up especially at the price point uh, that these these are coming in at so the only other thing that I've asked them and they know that I wanted is I want zero tier support 
in the UI, and I've heard that that, that is coming. So if there's anything specific you want to be see about this, now this is beta, but they give beta to everybody. You don't even have to sign up. If you just go to firmware.grandstream.com, which we'll do right here, and I'll leave uh, these notes down below, they, the beta program is open to absolutely everybody. And you can see that this is just for 7001, 7002, 7003. So we'll go back to these release notes. <coughs> And also, if you didn't know, you can have multiple WAN IP addresses. We've been able to have that for a while, but it does support multiple WAN IP addresses. This was just released on the 15th, been running it um, for a couple days. Seems to be working really well. If they find any showstoppers, of course, they will release an update. So if you like living on the edge, which we don't typically recommend in production, which is why this is sitting here um, on my desk being used um, you know you can install it just know that I don't believe that once you upgrade to this I don't know that you can uh, downgrade um, well it looks like you might be able to but it looks like it'll factory default the device so I've never done that I've never rolled back a, a grand a grand stream firmware on one of these routers, so I'm not 100% sure what that looks like. Maybe that'd make an interesting video. Let me know down below if you wanna see me roll that firmware back. If you've got any questions about this, if there's anything you wanna see, I am gonna be doing some more videos on this. I've still got the Wi-Fi videos, and James and I are gonna be doing a design video for his new house, and he's gonna use in-wall, a uh, combination of in-wall access points, maybe some ceiling mounted access points, but we've been talking about in-wall access points. So we're going to do um, a design video where we talk about why he's placing the access points, where they are. We're going to look at the predictive mapping that's in uh, gwn.cloud. Then once he gets the access points, he'll do some filming of him installing the access points and then we'll turn everything up. So that's coming as well. But I just can't believe all of the changes that they have. They they. I mean, this firmware update is huge. Is absolutely huge. So let me know what you want to see specifically. If you want me to walk through those VPN configurations and then show you from a client. If you want to see some of the BGP stuff, uh, the OSPF stuff, let me know. I'm more than happy to do that. And at some point. I mean, you've noticed I've probably been lagging a little bit on videos. At some point, I would get to those. But if there's a overwhelming um, if there's an overwhelming want in the, the comments that will get those videos bumped up a little bit. So if you've got any questions, if you're running this, let us know down in the comments, what it looks like for you. I'm super excited about this because these routers, um, cost less than competitors routers and are at this point providing a lot of value because everything that is in the UI of these will survive a, a firmware upgrade, right? So we're not having to do any kind of hacky workarounds that don't survive a firmware upgrade. That's one of the things that is really exciting to me about that is when they add this stuff in the official firmware, we typically don't have to worry about any of those problems with an upgrade. So let me know down in the comments what you think about this. Let me know if you're running these, if you're gonna give them a chance or whatever. Like I said, I'll leave a couple affiliate links down below and just, try it out. I mean, if you're, you know, you're into networking and you're learning what's, what's the harm in, in spending, you know, 60 bucks for a router, you know? So let me know down in the comments. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, and share, follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below along with affiliate links, a Patreon link. And if you need it consulting, head on over to willyhow.com, fill out the contact page. It's there on the, the front, right? As soon as you get there, someone will be in touch with you as soon as possible and head on over to community.willyhow.com. There's already a thread open about uh, this firmware and some of the changes. People are starting to really discuss it. So come on over, share your experience, ask your questions, all that good stuff. Once again, I'm Willie. I hope you're as excited about this release as I am. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.